Yeah, I think it's inside here. I mean, uh. Mm. <laughs> there you guys are. Well, uh, since you're here, I might as well talk to you. This is season four of The Loft. And the first episode, we got to speak with Wes, Wesley Jackson, a police officer for Utica, but he's just, he just does everything. He does a lot. So uh, the conversation got deep, it got very intuitive. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it and you subscribe and you like and you say a few words after. Well, I'll go back to what I was looking for. Welcome back to The Loft TV, The Loft Productions, The Loft Podcast. The Loft is home. And I'm happy you invited me onto your phone, onto your laptop, onto your TV, and watching with me. We have a very relentless, intelligent, creative human being in the room right now. But before we introduce this special guest, let's introduce the room. We got the one and only. Stretch, how you doing, King? I'm chilling, you feel me i'm yeah. so hyped for this episode right now <laughs> <laughs> you don't even understand <laughs> yes sir it's a different episode i'm super excited and we also got the beautiful daughter in the room uh-huh. you want to talk to the mic i'm so happy for my dad <laughs> i love uh-huh. it appreciate the love baby love appreciate it. the love and we got uh, uh, a legend we got i would like to say royalty because he's a king we uh, got he's... a big brother uh, we he's... got a big cuzzo. Uh, <laughs> we got family. Facts. And a very wise man. We got the one and only Wes. How you doing, brother? Peace, King. Thanks for having me. Let's tap it up for the road. Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me. That, I feel like this is, uh, like I said, I, I went about this episode differently than I've ever went on any episode. I had created no questions for this. Oh, listen, because it's going to be authentic Ooh. and organic. I've never done that. Even before, even, yo, know, stretch. Season one. Ooh. I always had a timeline of questions. Nothing nope. for this one. Wow. Because every time I speak to Wes, I feel like it's deeper than anything. Wes is someone I can literally look to and talk to and grab so much advice from that it's a long conversation the whole time. I can just pick at your brain. Well, then let Likewise. me let me uh, chime in real quick and say this. What's up? This is the first time I'll be saying this on, uh, well, publicly. Yeah. Wes is the reason and motivation yeah. for the way that I live my life today. I love that. Appreciate love it. That. Appreciate you it. Want clap? Appreciate Let's it. clap it up. Let's clap it Appreciate up. it. Appreciate it. I literally it. love that because people can give you those kind of compliments only because you live and you present yourself in a certain way. Like when I first came out here, you are probably the most respectful person that ever, like, I ever got introduced to. And I, ever since then, I was like, yo, Wes, what's up, bro? Always. <laughs> it was always love. Every time, anytime and every time I saw you, it was always love. Definitely, always man. love. And, and you're a man of many hats. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm just trying to, you know, trying to learn anything and everything I can and yeah. soak it all in. Yeah. That's it. So the direction, it's crazy. I have no questions. The direction we want to go with this podcast is insane. So I want to start off with this. Um, how are you, brother? Listen, I'm I'm all right. I'm yeah. holding together. I'm all right. I'm strong. Yeah. I'm you know I'm blessed, fortunate. Yeah. Happy to be here. <laughs> Just happy to be here. <laughs> so how does it feel to become a police officer? Listen, that was a dream come true. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't know if you know the backstory between myself and. The first time and the first opportunity I had mm-hmm. to get into the field, it was yeah. snatched away from me. Oh, get really? Into it. Yeah. It was, it, it was snatched away from me, you know. My upbringing kind of hindered my chances to advance myself in this career. Yeah. It felt, at first, that was, that was at first. Yeah. You know, they used that against me, used my uh, connections to the streets. I, I didn't grow up privileged. I grew up, mm. you know, underprivileged, yeah. which made me, in the, made me the man I am today. So, Respectfully. Um, they took that they took that away from me the first time around and I had to work three times as hard. Respectfully. So the first time, you know, it is what it is. I feel like it made me feel deep down inside I wasn't ready for that opportunity that was given to me. So when they took it away, I kinda put it on myself as like it was my fault. Yeah. As I got older, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't. You know. It was it was you all dealt the hands that you you were given. Yeah, yeah. You gotta play the cards, right? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta play those cards. So you know, I went away. 
I had to go hour and a half away from home to just become successful, just to get just to get my name out there. You feel wow. me? In a place that I never <laughs> ever stepped foot. I drove wow. through the town and village, but I never stepped so, out there. So, so you were determined to be in the in the seat you're in right now. Oh, determined, dedicated, sacrifice. <laughs> Respectfully, man. I, I did, listen. I was everything. Everything I had to work hard for. So I, I worked hard to get here to talk to you today. <laughs> Tell you that. So my question is: You were determined, but this when there's determination, there's always discouragement. How much were you discouraged? Like how many situations discouraged you before you can get to this? Oh, a seat lot. You're in? A yeah. lot. You know, there was a lot of times where I sat, talked to Stretch, mm-hmm. talked to my mom, talked to my dad. You know, I looked at my daughter, and that. At the time, that was before I had my son. Yeah. My daughter was all the motivation I need yeah. to get me out of, to get me past that discouragement. Yeah. So the people who were the naysayers, like, nah, he's too hood. He's he, he's from around the way. Yeah. He's too connected to the streets. Yeah. That only made me, you know, want to show them, like, so what? Yeah. So what? They connected. Yeah. Why can't I be connected? Exactly. <laughs> my exactly. people, my people who I'm connected to need me. Mm-hmm. A black community need me, and I never turn my back on that. And I. I think that's what kind of hindered me. How did you feel about the judgment from your own community of you becoming a p- police officer? The real ones who know me love me. Whew. The ones who don't know me, <laughs> that's just them. <laughs> get, to, get to know me, they love me too, you feel me? Respectfully. Did it, did it get to your head at first, though? At first it did. Yeah. First couple of days, there was a couple of times where, you know, a couple of dudes I knew yeah. was chatting sideways when I was in uniform and, and doing all that in front of everybody. Yeah. Knowing they wouldn't do that if I wasn't in that uniform, yeah. they would treat me with love and respect. Yeah. So that was the ignorance on them. So I couldn't take that ignorance and make myself feel bad yeah. that I'm taking a position of power to help build up my community, yeah. help uplift others, you know, help inspire others to want to be in this field. You know, yeah. I, I couldn't let that. I couldn't let that hurt me. Yeah. So, you know, with that being said, that shit just motivated me on the real. So I love that. Yeah, respectfully. And and and. and you do it so well that folks really just want to follow your footsteps. Uh, I hope I, I facts. If that's the case, I appreciate the I appreciate the, How do you, you feel know? about that though? Cuz I I I've I've heard multiple folks come up to me. I think I'm like the 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 tunnel before it gets to you or you already know about it, but folks come to me like, "Yo, you see, after we get get done talking to you and we walk away, we walking right. away from talking to you." Like, "Yeah, West think you want to be a cop. Like, I'm really about to be a cop." Nah, that's that's love. That's love, you know, because there was dudes before me who paved the way. Yeah, like Lieutenant Wooden. Mm-hmm. She's a black female from Cornhill. She yeah. she's someone who I looked up to all my life. You I know, she that. grew up with my. She grew up in the ne- same neighborhood as me. Mike Washington. He's an investigator with the city. Mm-hmm. I grew up looking at these dudes, you know and I mean, so yeah. I'm like, wow, they they doing it. And you know, Pernell Wadley. They they pulled me aside like, yeah, listen, young man. When I was on that strayaway path, when I was young, before I got into this field, these dudes humbled me and was like, yo, listen, stop that. Get over here. Do right. and, and do right. Yeah. And then you do right, you teach another one. Each one teach one. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. We all got a job to do. And that's actually why I transferred back to the city because, you know, I was I was with Oneida County Sheriff's Office. I did my little 18 months there. Yeah. And then I was so determined after the George Floyd incident mm-hmm. to get back to my community. Yeah. I, I didn't live deep into the backwood towns and yeah. th- where I was patrolling. I didn't, yeah. I didn't live like that. I didn't know anything about those people. So... Mm-hmm. I was so determined after George Floyd to get back home and and make my presence felt here in this community, whether it was clean our streets up, because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously every black, brown community, we plagued by gun violence. Yeah. So it was either clean that up or s- have as many people in the community see me, see a black person in uniform yeah. and say, hey, I can do that, too. Hey. He from he from the same block I'm from. I love that. So that, that was my that. motivation. I love that. So, I just, I just, it resonates with me, man. I find, I find it beautiful, man. Like you're a, you're a man. You're a classy man. Appreciate that. And you know me. I like class. I'm a man of class. So I can see someone older than me that has w- wisdom, but also practice what they preach. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Facts. Because I, I have a lot of folks that have great knowledge, very wise, but they not, they not practicing nothing that they preach. Hypocrisy. Oh my gosh! Is is and you want me to go off of your your advice? <laughs> Listen, hypocrisy is a, is a bad is a bad thing. Come on, it's a bad thing. I. You only have your word, and you you know, as a man, you only have your word, and you you know what? Yeah, respect. So yeah, 
if that's all I got to live by. I'm going <laughs> to live by my word. I'm going to live by my word. Yeah. You know? What's your, uh, I ask you this, this question. What's your, what's your description? When you hear the word Utica, what's your description of it? Listen, I grew up in Corn Hill, so, yeah. you know, back in the day, when I hear Utica, I say family. Uh-huh. We were very family-oriented, yeah. very. Your neighbor, no matter if your neighbor was white, black, Puerto Rican, or Asian, that was aunt, uncle, or Mr. or Mrs. Respectfully. So it was, it, it was such a respect factor driven in us, instilled in us at a young age. So, mm-hmm. like I said, family is the first thing I hear of when I think of this place. Yeah, that's dope. How about for you, Stretch? When you hear the word Utica... What's the what's the words the description you think of when you? Honestly, for me, bro, when I hear Utica, I just think home. Hmm. I just think Lansing Street, two hundred block. I think of <laughs> where uh, I forgot the street where you lived on off of Grant mm-hmm. Thomas Street. Yep, off of, off of Grant. I think of Howard Ave. You know, I think of the hill. Yeah, that's so okay. I just think of all of it and. That's why I, I just feel so strongly connected to the city. Yeah. I feel like my ties are too deep here. Yeah. Facts. I just don't want to, I want to invest in it instead of leaving. Yeah. So, yeah, man, that's that's probably it for me. What's your, um, <clears throat> you could, if you could set a goal for Utica right now, what would it be? <laughs> Open the doors up for more minorities to get in public safety. Wow. That's, that's, Talk. that's truly my goal. Yeah. Whether it's police and fire, yeah. whether it's Department of Public Works, yeah. whether it's engineering department, we need to see more of us, you know, with patrolling. But Patr- even even if it's just patrol yeah. as a police officer, yeah. I want to see more of us in positions that are, you know, we that aren't frequently sought out. Yeah. So we we need to get there, and that's my goal. If I could be seen like, yo, this dude is doing it. He's literally from thirteen oh eight Seymour Ave. Yeah. The trenches. Yeah, the trenches. He, he's really here doing it. Yeah. So why can't we do it? Yeah. You know? So that's what I want to see. I want to see young young kids get deterred away from the street culture mm-hmm. and that, that lifestyle and want to do something, you know, productive. Be a productive member of society. Yeah. And also, that's why I got my boxing gym, you know. We just don't talk on it, but we here now. Oh, listen. Hey. I hey. love that, bro. Yeah. Like, when you mentioned it to me, I, you just... I love how you just lightly drop things out. Like, yeah, yeah, check my boxing gym. And then you walk away. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> That's fire, brother. So it's called Wilson's Cops and Kids. Yeah. I run it with uh, three of my f- three of my fellow police officers, yeah. Felix Santana, uh-huh. and you got Chris Evans, a.k.a. Captain America. Okay. Also, Andy Mejia is a former pro boxer. Love that. Dan Carroll. Okay. You got uh, Bill Rossi. Okay. We have, we have a nice group of men who yeah. volunteer their time and services to underprivileged kids Mm -hmm. and we're trying to keep them off the street yeah so basically our motto is guns down gloves up yeah 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 in our group we try to teach character respect Mm -hmm. confidence Mm -hmm. and hard work ethic i love that so so is there like a certain age group for this or like we get we got kids ranging from you see my son's in there my son one years old he in there (laughs) Uh, he works just as hard as everybody else. Love I was like, yeah. my daughter's in there. Yeah, uh, we have kids ranging from five to we have adults in there, man. Really? Adults, dudes who just come fresh out, yeah. that just need to release some steam and yeah. re- let off some energy. Come on into the gym, mm-hmm. you know, hit the bag a little bit, talk with us. We we chop it up with you, yeah. you know. So we don't come in there as police officers. We come in there as human beings. Yeah. So now my question to you is like, you are not 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 to diminish it any any sense but you are more than a police officer are you do you not like the fact that people only look at you a police officer now when they see you outside of your uniform nah i I could care less okay respectfully honestly i could just care less you know like i said the ones who know me love me yeah and then even when i walk through the hood i still i'll I'll park my car Mm -hmm. and show up to a cookout Yeah, yeah and i'm on duty (laughs) <laughs> Respectfully, I, I will this is park true. my car. This is true. And show up to your cookout. <laughs> this is true. And I don't care what you're doing. I'm coming for the plate. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm coming for the plate. So all that other, I'm still the same old dude yeah. from around the way. You know, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to persecute. I'm not the judge, jury, and executioner. Mm-hmm. I'm just West man. Yeah. I'm just someone who just want to spread love and unity and you know positivity. That's it, man. Yeah. I love that, man. I, I love that you you don't. You can differentiate differentiate from the from the two. Yes, 
Like, you, it's not like 24-7, hey, that's my life, and that's it. Yeah. Nah. He always says that to me. I, I've asked him that, like, 30 million times, bro. And he says, I'm only a cop for eight hours a day. Yeah. I'm a black man for 24 hours. Respectfully. A that cop for you. eight. How is, how is it being a black man inside? On which side, though? Hey, you can elaborate on whichever okay, came so to your first. Okay, mind had, well, I can't even speak. Whatever you, came to your head first. Are you, are you, <clears throat> are you accepted fully in the black community? No. You're no longer accepted, you know, because the stop the snitching culture, the, mm-hmm. the that culture, how we perceive in police officers, yeah. you know, I, in our community, police officers didn't come with milk and cookies no. and to say hello. What they do, they came to take my mom, my dad, yeah. my brother, my yeah. cousins, anybody. They took them away from me. Yeah, usually not positive. Right. Yeah. But so you you get perceived that way. Yeah. But then, in a sense, you got your white counterparts. Yeah. You're still not perceived equal to them. Jeez. So Talk. you know you, you you can't you can't take it personal, but you got dudes being hired from backwood towns who ain't never associated with black people, and the only time they see us is on TV and we in chains, mm. and then the only time they really see us is when they patrol in our neighborhood, mm. and when they patrol in our neighborhood they getting called to the house for obviously a reason, yeah. and then what do they do? They think something might be wrong with all of us. Jeez. They generalize us Jeez. and they group us. So, you know, when when you have so few of us in a predominantly white field, mm-hmm. you're not viewed the same. Yeah. And and they look at you as they want you to help them. Yeah, What's yeah. So, you're, you're, you're constantly being, I'll, I'll tell you from experience, yeah. you're constantly being scrutinized. Yeah. This is personal experience, what I just went through <laughs> yeah, recently. I, I'm saying, I'm saying. Talk heavy. I'm saying, you're not saying from a general aspect you're saying from actual experience actual experience i'll tell you the truth okay so recently i had to do a five-day leave from work okay due to me having association with a felon Mm -hmm. the felon is my brother-in-law okay so they have felons in their families yeah they hang out with felons post it parade it yeah they thought I was on a different side. Yeah. Mind you, I was just with the gun unit for the last two years, and we were the most successful gun unit probably in the state. Talk yeah. about it. <laughs> we, we cleaned up these streets, yeah. me and my four counterparts. Yeah. You know, we did our, we did our job respectfully. Mm-hmm. So at this time, you know, they thought that I turned a blind eye to my own people. Yeah. I, I had to tell them, look at all my arrests. Yeah. Especially with the guns. Look it was, at my resume. It, it, was, it was black folk, unfortunately, that I was putting away. Yeah. And still, they question my loyalty. Which side you on? And That's I had tough. and I had to tell them, I'm on your side, but I'm on the right side. Mm. And when I mean the right side, I'm not gonna do anything to hurt anybody. Either it's y'all, myself, or these people. Yeah, I'm gonna do my job unbiasedly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, unbiased. Yeah. So when I had to tell them that, they looked at me and was like, "Then what do we?" So I had to ask them, what are we doing here? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> like, what's there? going on here? Yeah, yeah, y'all, yeah. Y'all questioning my loyalty, and yeah. it brought me back, you know? Certain things, like they say, okay, we speak about a trauma. That's a trauma to me because what happened to me back in 2014 with the same employer. Yeah. You feel me? So the fact of the matter is that I still have to face that eight years later. And I'm on. And I'm on y'all's side. Yeah. When are y'all ever going to trust me? <laughs> when are you ever going to trust me? Yeah. So I, I could get, like I said, I could get how many gun headlines you see in the news. Mm. We never had that. We, we never had a, such a successful unit until they created the unit that we had, yeah. the Give Task Force. Yeah. And that was myself, Gomez, Jukic, Flo, Ambrose, yeah. Dewey, and Austin. Yeah. That was all of us out here putting in work night, day, trying uh-huh. to clean up these streets, save, trying to, every gun we got off potentially saved a life. Mm. But at the end of the day, none of them got questioned about their loyalty. Come on, bro. Except me. Wow. Come so, on. Man. And none of them look like me. But it's okay. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. So let's let's get into the to the to let's get a little deeper. How was that that mental battle? With what? Of it all. You getting questioned from the team that you supposedly joined, right. the team that you supposedly left, the team that you're a part of. Like there's so many different aspects that so many different voices in your head, so many different looks. Now you are ostracized. You're 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 your own person. Oh, you are. 
But so now, how is that mental? That honest mental battle. It, it's it's troubling. Yeah. I tell you, there's been times where you know I got let off some steam where yeah. I go. I, uh, two a days. I yeah. go to that gym two, three times a day. <laughs> yeah. I, I get outside, run, put my headphones Sir, on. Sir, you just left. No, I'm no, back. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back, fam. I'm, I'm back for a reason. Like I, I'm, I'm not right right now. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah. gonna get this. I'm gonna get this pain in the head. Yeah. And that that's became like a second nature mm-hmm. when you start to, you know, it it truly becomes trouble, an internal battle. Yeah. An internal battle that you have to deal with. But you gotta have a good strong support system. I, I and I have I don't have that. And I'm not. I'm not afraid to say it. Like I, I speak to, a, I spoke to a therapist. Mm. You know, once I joined this field, it, it's kind of, it's kind of real. So, so, so before that, were you like against it? Were you like speaking to a therapist? Were you oh, like, absolutely. Come on now. <laughs> you know, in the black community, come on. I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest. Talk in, to me. Yeah. In the, in the black community, come on, man. You, 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 you say you, you this You're crazy. You crazy. Your, yeah. your parents gonna look at you because they grew up in the '60s and yeah. '50s and '70s. They gonna look at you like, no, you're not weak. Yeah. You're not weak. Nothing wrong with you. Stop yeah. being a punk. Man up. Yeah. Nah, I, I had to. Uh, you had to take that into consideration. Like something might be wrong with me. T- yeah, like today, yeah, I might yeah. not be mentally okay. Today, I like. I might have. I might. I got emotions, yeah. and it was okay to. I, I, I came to. I came to realization yeah. that it was okay to express those emotions instead of bottle them up because, yeah. you know, and growing up the way I grew up, I, I faced a lot of a lot of emotions, yeah. trauma, a yeah. lot of emotions. You know, I never let it. Never let it show, or never let it be known. I walk around like, oh yeah, I'm good. Yeah, but yeah, deep yeah. down the side, when I, you know, before I got the support system together, yeah. I was I was struggling. <laughs> I was struggling, Respectful, bro. Yeah. I, and it was it was, you know, it, it was tough. Yeah. It was tough. So you you start once you start struggling like that, you start to struggle in many other aspects. Mm-hmm. I, I felt myself struggling as a father. You know, mm-hmm. I fl- felt That's like honest. I was taking a, taking the job home to my daughter. Mm-hmm. My daughter don't deserve that. Yeah. You know, I, I felt like I was ostracizing myself away from my family because yeah. I didn't want them to be ridiculed because of a job I took. Yeah. But then I had to realize, like, that's not the case. Yeah. I'm only better in my life and potentially better in other lives yeah. by being in this position of power. Respectfully. You know, I'm not a crab in a barrel type of dude. Yeah. I put my hand out. I'm lifting you up. Yeah. You feel me? I'm not pulling you down. I'm lifting you up. Respectfully. So. Wow. Well said. I, I would say... <coughs> When you first got to therapy, um, was it hard opening up? Yo, I'm not gonna lie, man. I cried, man. Mm. I cried. It was deep. It was deep. Like they say, when you really like finally express, yeah. you the weight fill up, like the weight is off your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I sat there and I started expressing everything. Like I felt like it was bothering me, and like everything I felt like I was going through the yeah. the micro traumas, the, the the traumas I had, everything. Yeah. I was just like. Whew, shit, I'm good. <laughs> He's like, like, this I'm, is what it's like. This is what it's like. This yeah. is what it feel like. Yeah. You know, but like I said, you, you don't want to be shunned in your own community yeah. by doing that. Nah, hell no. Nah. I encourage that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. encourage everybody. Exactly. I encourage everybody to do that. If you haven't, get you a therapist, you get you a support system, exactly. someone you could talk to, someone who's going to listen to you yeah. and not judge you, man. Because what you may feel like, Maybe small to somebody else, yeah. maybe large to you. Exactly. So you know, don't don't ever down somebody for what they're going through. Trust me. So let's let's get into the conversation. I feel like you touched on without touching on the conversation of pride. Oh yeah. Before you <laughs> before you answer that, Wes, I just want to say, how dare you hide your intentions? This man used to call me, talking about. Let's go run five miles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, five miles. <laughs> five miles. Oh, yeah. And he'll be like, yeah, that's light. Come oh, you on, would just, And just, I'm just like. When you're going through it, man, you just you go for days. <laughs> and, and then I'm like, all right, well, all right, let's go. He like, and right. you, no, 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 no. Then you would call me. <laughs> acting like I'm going to pull up <laughs> early in the morning. Like, yo, we going to West Crib at like six. Yeah. You coming? Okay. I'd be like this. Stretch. Get off my phone and <laughs> stuff. Like, what it's are you way doing, too though? Early. Way too well, early. Wes be wildin', bro. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll see you at 5.30. <laughs> what? But I'm up. I'm up. I'm up at 4.15. Really? Just got out of work at midnight. I'm up. Wow. When you when you hurting, not even hurting, when you stressing and all that, yeah. you don't sleep. You Your don't sleep. Yeah, Your yeah, mind yeah, constantly yeah. racing. Yeah. So, like, I wasn't sleeping a lot. So, if I ain't going to sleep, I'm going to work. Yeah. I'm going to work. I'm going to work out. Then I'm gonna go to work. 
Yeah. Then I'm gonna come home and eat something quick. Then I'm gonna go back to work. Then I'm gonna work out again. Yeah. Then I'm gonna work my fatherly duties. Yeah. You know, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I have to do. Yeah. And I might fall asleep for an hour, and then I'm going back to work. Yeah. So like during that time, I felt like I found myself literally like putting in 30, 40 extra hours of work week. Mm. Uh, you know, deprive myself of all like your your daily basics. Yeah. You feel me? So you were like throwing yourself at the work because you were you were so stressed with everything going on, but you only found comfort in what you knew. Right. And then the, I was also fighting that my inner self. Like yeah. I'm proving to my team yeah. that I'm here. Yeah. I'm here when you need me. I'm here when you want me. I'm here when you don't want me. I'm yeah. here when you don't need me. I'm going to put this work in and you're going to see this. Mm-hmm. But then again, while I'm fighting, while I'm doing all this for the team, they still ain't trusting me. <laughs> and I'm taking away from my real team, which is my my, my daughter, yeah. my fiance, yeah. my you know, my son. So I, I'm taking away from all that. Yeah. So it's a balance I had to find. Mm. Like you you trying to make someone like you, but at the same time I'm making the people who love me not like me. Mm. Mm. So I had to find that common that common balance, that common ground. So That's crazy. So so <clears throat> being a man in law enforcement. Do you have to remove your pride a lot? Do you have a lot of pride? Like, what's the, how's that work now? Pride to get you in trouble. Mm. Pride, pride to definitely get you in trouble. That's why we got the problems we got now. Yeah. In law enforcement, too much pride and too much ego. Yeah. Take your feelings out of it. Yeah. Take you ain't Superman with that uniform on. You're just another person with a job. Yeah. But that job should be treated, done unbiasedly, you know, uh, uh, unprejudiced. Yeah. So. That's what that's pride. Yeah. That's a sense of pride. A lot of people. That's why the culture we have mm-hmm. of men in law enforcement or white men in law enforcement mm-hmm. is too much pride. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I had to separate my pride. You know, like I said, there was a couple of times where I was like, "Yo, nah, son, you ain't gonna talk to me like that." Hold <laughs> on, posting out my chest to people like, "Nah," but where is that going to get me? Yeah. Unemployed. Yeah. A lawsuit. Yeah. I'm gonna lose my house, my car. Yeah. My kids gonna be hungry. Yeah. And and then what? It's going to make me look like I'm abusing that power that was given to me and entrusted by the people and the oath that I took. Yeah. So I had to change that up. So I had to, once you swallow that pride, put that pride aside, I got checked a couple times by some coworkers. Like, yo, you... Calm down. Calm it down. Yeah. You know, my pop, same way. You good. You yeah. good. You know you know who you are, son. Yeah. Take that pride out of it. And once I started doing that from the OG, I was golden, man. I was golden. Love that. Yeah. I love that. Don't y'all love that? I love that. I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like as I say this every episode, I feel like pride is the biggest battle in today's generation. <laughs> in everything. Like, and I'm not, obviously, not a law enforcement. I'm in, like, a different way, in a different world. I don't speak on that on camera. But I feel like pride is destroying everything right now. Especially in our community. Heavily. Especially in our community. I feel like, this is just me saying this, I feel like pride is this sentence perfectly for a majority of us in our community. Trying to go, trying to not look broke, but going broke trying to prove that you're not broke. That's something I just said to my daughter today. (laughs) Like, why are you trying to prove to someone that does not care about you at all, literally Mm -hmm. forgot you after they saw you, Mm -hmm. that you're not broke? Knowing damn well, you're broke. So now I feel like that's more of a battle between pride and ego. That's pride yeah. and ego go pride hand in hand. Hand in hand. 100%. Hand, hand, hand in hand. hand. Mm. Do you think society plays a role in that, though, by pressuring people to feel that way? Yeah. That's, oh. That's the, that's Look what you see on TV. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's got gold chains. Yeah. Everybody's got diamonds. Yeah. Especially in our culture. Yeah. yeah. The so, gold chains, the diamond, the teeth. Yeah. And, you know, and everybody's got to have the highest of end product. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. My jeans, Target. Talk about it. <laughs> Shirt, somewhere I don't even know. Talk I'm, about I'm it. I'm a free man, though, respectfully. Talk about so, it. So, you know, yeah. I, I ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. I do that all the time. Since I'm a, this is this is the funniest thing. I've said this before, but, like, I haven't said it on camera. People... 
know I'm a very respectful, classy man. So they Respect. just assume everything I have on is expensive. <laughs> People love to do it for me. They be like, Rich, where you get that? That's got to be Javanchi. That's got to <laughs> be Gucci. I'm like, dog. Sure, whatever you want. Sure. Whatever you want it to be. Whatever you want it to be is whatever you I want I just it know to be. I look fit. I look calm. I feel comfortable. In your own skin. And respectfully. Yeah. I have nothing to prove to nobody. I want to be clean. That's the only thing I want to be. That's it. I just want to be, I want to come up, I want to be approached clean and I want to come off clean. That's it. That's it. And it doesn't matter what you're wearing. You could be clean and you could be clean in a basic white t-shirt. A exactly. Hanes. Exactly. A Hanes. Exactly. But people love, people love, but I, when I, once I started getting that a lot, I'm just like, dang, y'all really look for approval from everybody. Everything got to have that rubber stamp, stamp on it. Yes. Why? I don't care. You walk in looking crazy, but it's all Gucci. You feel good because it's all Gucci. You look crazy. <laughs> you look crazy. You look dusty. You, what, what, I tell you, what, what I tell you before this. <laughs> what is, you we, said, we said dusty, dirt, you dusty. You can't be DBB. <laughs> dusty, broken, bad. You oh, can't respectfully. Be, you can't respectfully. be dusty, like, broken, bad. They can't be all together. So yeah. I just feel like nobody cares. The wrong people care. The wrong people do care, and that the, shouldn't be in The wrong circle. people care. Yeah. I, I learned that early on, yeah. and I, I talked to Stretch about this several times. Yeah. I used to work in finance when I was from 21 to about 24. Okay. I was a personal banker. Yeah. So we had a guy come in the bank several times. Dude smelled like motor oil. Dude looked like he fresh off a lawnmower. Yeah. Something. Opened up that man bank account, a couple million there. Mm. Mm. The lady who came in with the Gucci's on and all that, come in there, negative. <laughs> <laughs> she dying to try to look like him. Respect. But he living his life comfortably. It's it's the, it's the mindset. And this man talked to me a couple times, and he was like, listen, I, I'm okay. His shoes had holes in them. Yeah. He was okay because yeah. he had that hard work, and he earned all them zeros in his account. Respectfully. And he was okay with looking like he just came out of work. Respectfully. So, you know, and the other person cared about the image and what she portrayed to be. Yeah. Nah, that's not how Hungry. life worked. You, you, stomach growling. You lost yourself. Stomach growling. Bag, bag Gucci, but stomach growling. <laughs> in the back of her stomach, bro. Her <laughs> stomach in the back. Yeah, respectfully. Yeah, nah. And people lose themselves trying to get that validation from others. Yeah. And when you have to seek that validation of others, you have to look yourself in the mirror. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there's a... An inner battle that you have to fix within. Yeah. Because I don't need approval from no man, nobody, no woman, no nothing. No. The only man who's going to judge me is God. I, that's I feel it. like, I feel like, I feel a lot of things, but I feel like once you can realize money is a tool. That's it. Rather than something you... You need, you need, you need. You give it so much power, you're always going to want it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You're always going to like give it so much power. You're going to always going to put it over your head. But once you see it as something level-headed, yep. you can always attain it. It's, it's everywhere. If you literally think about it, money's everywhere. It's not. It's not. I'm not saying for the poor folks that have been disadvantaged, it's hard for them respectfully. But once you give it so much like it's prestige, it's just like, bro, don't give nothing that except for God. You get lost. Yeah. You get lost. You lose your soul. Look how many people lose their soul for dollar signs they ain't never seen before. Exactly. Lose their soul, sell themselves, and, you know, go crazy. Go crazy. Go, go crazy. They'll degrade themselves and <laughs> and lose and lose all their core values Yeah, for that dollar. Yeah. I, I always say, well, I don't always say it, but it's something I stand by is uh, if you live for something, if you live for nothing, you stand, stand for something. You stand for something. No, if you, what is it? Something like that. If you live for something, I'm messing it up. You fall for nothing. You fall for something like that. So, I, know, I know you. But you know what I'm we, we ought to, Yeah. But I feel like once you like have a set of morals and you like, you don't get out, get out of character for nobody, you always stand to it, nobody's going to question it no more. That's it. Your character is who you, who you really is. Yeah. Your, your what they say? Your character is who you really is, who you really are. My reputation is who you want me to be. Yeah. So. <sighs> Always remember that. Now, that. now that I led myself into this conversation, how many people have portrayed that they are this hood gangster? <laughs> <laughs> Mafia, top-notch dog. And when it came down to it, 
What you want the truth? Talk about it. We on the law. Listen, every you you got people who will live and die by that stop snitching culture. Yeah. Until they in that hot seat. <laughs> And then it's like, yo, Wes, let me holler at you for a second. <laughs> and you know, we, hey, it helps. It, it, we, we as a people, mm-hmm. you see something bad, you, you tell on it. Yeah. This is what I call snitching. If I'm a dope dealer and you're a dope dealer, and I ain't got no dealings with you, but I go tell on you to get off because I'm in, I'm in the hot seat. Yeah. That's wrong, man. Yeah. That's wrong. You, you should take your punishment as a man and an adult, respectfully. Yeah. You know, but if, if you, West Jackson, who live in the neighborhood, and you see something, you go tell on it. Hey, listen, I saw this, and you bring the attention to it. Yeah, it, you're a you, good civilian. You're a good civilian. Yes. You're a Samaritan. Yeah, you're a good Samaritan. Yes, you are a civilian who wants his community to be safe. Yeah, you want to be safe. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be safe. But we have people in this community yeah. who chest out, chest out. Yeah, guns are blazing. Yeah. Yo, cuz, man. <laughs> yo, Wes, I've been looking for you, bro. Yo, I've been looking for you. Hey, yo, my man. <laughs> Where you at? <laughs> like, like, yo, what you do? Yeah. Yo, cuz, I got to tell you, this is bothering me right now. Like, I, yo, like, but it, it, and it's sad you do have that, be, and that goes to pride. Yeah. That's what it, it all falls. It together. all falls. I, it all falls. I, I said it, didn't I? Yeah, you definitely I did. Because <laughs> their ego is in the way in the street. They want that approval from yes. other people in the streets yeah. instead of being good old Joe Blow. Yeah. A uh, uh, hardworking c- yeah. c- civilian, yeah. hardworking, productive member of society. Mm-hmm. They want that persona as like they are the Frank Lucas mm. or the Nicky Barnes or Timo Supremo from, they want that from Queens yeah. from back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. They want that name. They want people, you know, I, I, I'll say it, my brother, uh-huh. right? This is this is I could speak from personal experience. My okay. brother, right? He's sitting up he's sitting up top right now. He's in prison. Okay. And him and I had conversations. He this is his second prison stint. Yeah. So during the first con- his first bid, he gets out. Everything was like, yo, man, I just did a bid. I did this, I did that, I did this. Why are you glorifying Mm-mm. that? You shouldn't. When you could be glorifying going to work. You was working in there as a as a porter for forty five cent yeah. an hour. Yeah. So you telling me you can't go work at McDonald's for fifteen? They minimum wage fifteen in New York State. Yeah. You telling me you can't work for fifteen an hour at McDonald's or C W S I whatever the, the it's pride. Yeah. It's pride. And he had that image he wanted to portray. Now he's sitting in there again because of pride yeah. and that image uh-huh. once again that that persona he wanted to portray that he was some Billy Blanks. Yeah. And now look who's suffering. Yeah. My nieces. My sister in law, my mom, my dad, my yeah. niece, my my kids. Yeah. They don't got their uncle. His kids don't have their father. <laughs> you yeah. know, once again, it's that that revolving door, and the, you take the the snake out the house, the head of this head yeah. out the head of the household out. Yeah. And now, what do you have? You have a woman raising all those kids by herself. Yeah. yeah. That's Can't tough. have that. That's tough. You know, you got a you you got a man in prison glorifying what he's seeing on the inside, yeah. and he's facing all type of traumas in there. Yeah. You know, so what do we have? At what time do you swallow that pride and that That's ego tough. and let that that ego fly away? That's tough. And just live life. I realized for myself, <clears throat> I realized I had tons of billions of pride after a relationship. A relationship in in college, like I think it's like my my sophomore year. I had so much pride. Mm. I was. Mr. Prideful, and my friends would be so surprised of how prideful I was. I'm the unprideful at all right now. Like I have no pride right now. Right. But during that stage, you couldn't tell me nothing. It, it came to the point where the person I was dating at the time told me, uh, "You are so prideful. You just won't. You won't hear me. You can't even hear when I'm speaking." And I'm like. You're right, because I'm trying to def- I'm trying to defend myself before you think of a new sentence. Facts, facts. Literally, before you speak, before you open your mouth, I wanted to prove everybody wrong. Because what I what am I good at? Communication. What am I good at? Debating. So I was ready f- to I was ready to come at anybody. Right. Until I looked at her and I saw how hurt she was, and she just wanted to say her piece, and her piece was not wrong. Perspectives are different. Everybody's mm-hmm. perspective is different. Had to learn that. And then I sat there like. So how do you feel? She's like, well, I'm hurt. And I'm like, oh, well, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's it. Move forward from it. I feel like ever since then, and I made my, my friend group, I grew up with my friends, 
I literally have no pride in anything I do. I, I'm wrong. Cause I'm, I'm wrong a lot. Oh, yeah. And I could take that. That's deep. I could take that. That's deep. Because at the end of the day, we still friends. Right. You bottle all that in, now you lose a friendship because of pride. How many people could say they swallow their pride, though? How mm-hmm. many... How, I had to swallow my pride in my, with my relationship I'm in now with my fiance. Yeah. That was... It took me, what? I've been with her three years. It took me <laughs> till 30 years old mm. to get rid of that pride. And I lost meaningful relationships over pride. You know, my my real core group of friends, all my cream, all my friends, the cream team, mm-hmm. you know, even them, they tell you. Uh, I had too much pride at, at points of time in my life. Yeah. And then talking with them, getting their perspective, and then talking to my mom, same thing. My mom, you too prideful, son. Yeah. You, and, and you hearing it from Mama Love, that it, it, you, hit, a it hit a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hit a little different. And you know, when you're talking to young ladies on the street or women out here, you you talking to whatever, yeah. and they hit you, oh, you too proud, you just try to brush, brush it, it off. Man. Yeah, okay. like, this past day, baby. Relax, yeah. mommy. Yeah, like, listen, relax. Bar. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. But then you, you're you not listening. Yeah. Your ego and your pride is getting in the way of hearing someone else's criticism. Yeah. And all it is is constructive. It's not like they're trying to bash you and embarrass you or yeah, down you. No. They're just trying to help you. Respect. They, they try to help you grow. Respect. And I had to learn that. Yeah. It took me 30 years. It took me 30 years. That's real. And if my fiance would tell you, like, listen, there was times where we, we almost had to walk away from each other. Because <laughs> yeah. my pride, man, my pride. Yeah. Like, and I had to, you know, it's not. A, it's okay to submit, yeah. be submissive sometimes. Yeah. So you that's, know, if that's your lady, if that's your family, yes. You, why not? Why are you so? You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I literally have this conversation with myself or with folks all the time. Like, pride is the devil. Like, oh, hundred percent. Like, if you remove pride in so many situations, nothing would happen. Walk up in the room. Scenario. I love scenarios. You remember the scenarios from season one? I always got the best scenarios. It's always <laughs> out of whack. It's always crazy. You walk into the room, right? You with all your your boys. You walking up, dapping up every dump, dapping up everybody. And then that one dude give you that weak dap. You know the dap I'm talking the, about. It's the, the bullshit dap. Yeah, they're yeah. like, bro, why like, you even like? Yeah. And then you feel a way. Yeah. Because now it's in front of the shorty you really wanted. Yes. So now you're like... And you got to do something now. Because Shorty looked at you like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he really got it like that. <laughs> now she clowning you. Now he clowning oh, you. Yeah, 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 so now your pride set in. Ego all in. Like, dog, what's good with you? And you just, and dude's like, what's up? And you about to fight for what? A dap? A, a dap. It could have been, he could have been preoccupied. He, he could have been just or, or he went to the gym, messed up his fingers. Yes. You don't even know. <laughs> you, exactly. you, don't, you don't know why exactly. what happened happened. And now Shorty look and all Shorty was thinking she didn't say nothing. And she just looked looked at you in a way. And she probably just thought, damn, he has lit in his hair. Yes. And you didn't even know that. <laughs> but you, you but that pride got to you. The pride was so it, you started making scenarios in your head. Like y'all about to if I snuff this dude real quick. She gonna like me more, and I'm gonna throw my phone in the air. She gonna catch it. She gonna catch it. <laughs> she go. She gonna really be like, "Yo, he's special." Yo, he's nice. But you not even know what that girl, or that person thinking. Respectfully, and the, I, I, listen, it'll get you in trouble. It will. It'll get you. It'll get you in trouble. It will. And, or even if, here's another one. You with, you with your friends, right? You yeah. with your friends, and you, your girl be like, "Listen, just could you be home by ten thirty? Woo! But you with your friends. Woo! And you're like, nah, I'm good. Woo! I'm going to handle <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm going to handle this. Yeah. But she she told you. She gave you hints of why she wants you home. Yeah. She got to wake up in the morning early. No. She don't feel well. She can't fall asleep without you in the bed. She can't. She don't feel comfortable because of trauma, past traumas that she had. Respectfully. Maybe her, maybe a boyfriend in the past. And, and because the environment's a little tough. Uh, yes. She has every right to feel that she way. She has every right to feel that way. Yes. Hey, could you be home at a reasonable hour? Love. And you just brush that off. Yeah. Hey. Now, 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 now you see a couple friends, and now you're pride in the way. Look, heavy. <laughs> look, I will be the first to say, yeah. Stretch has done that many times. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I, I've been there. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the clock. I'm looking at the watch. Like, I got ten minutes. <laughs> I, I, I got fifteen minutes. Yeah. Fifteen minutes pass. Yeah. Now, you know, she worried. The text call. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I was about to say, uh, hit like 30, 
you get phone calls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fifteen minutes, you get the text. The yeah. 15, 15 minute 15, warning. Fifteen minute mark. Fifteen minute warning. Bing, you on bing. your way? <laughs> what you, you doing? <laughs> you on your way? Then you get that that thirty no, minutes. No, it's not even you on your way yet. It's everything okay? Every, yeah. oh. Everything okay? <laughs> you know. And you then know. you feel like yeah. bad in a sense. Yeah. So you make up a corny excuse. <laughs> yeah. Timbo just fell and broke his leg. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and then she's like, "Okay, I'm just waiting for you at home." And you just like, "Ah, right, yeah, just give me." And now you think you got more time, <laughs> right? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't bought myself an extra extra thirty Timbo, minutes. Timbo, break the leg, yeah, break hurry. the leg for me, cause hurry up. Yo, stand right here. Let me see you twist your ankle quick. I'm gonna send this on a snap. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna send this on a snap, and then I'm gonna say, "Shake my head, shake right? my head." Then, but then look, we're gonna go back in this bar. We're gonna go back wherever we're going. We're we gonna party. turn up. Yeah, but why? Exactly. For all that, for what? Just go home. Just go home. Just, <laughs> just, go, just home. go the hell home. Just go because home. she's she's care she cares. Yes. That pride got in the way. Yeah. And now imagine all that. That starts what? Unwanted fights. Yeah. On Un- oh. Oh. Pain pain that you don't want to go through at exactly. home. Unwanted pain that you yeah. don't want to deal with. Yeah. I don't want them stressors. Y'all don't yeah. want to deal with more I stress. Like stress. I don't like I, to be stressed. I don't all. like to be stressed about shit. At all. Oof. Hell no. No. But your pride. Yo, I, listen, she told me to come home in front of my boys. I ain't coming home until the next hour. <laughs> Damn it. I ain't coming home. I'm, I'm the man of this shit. Yeah. And that's and that's how yeah. you start to and that's how you start to look and Damn. with that pride. Hey, lose. I needed this. You you it's lose. True. I you, need, you, I need listen, this combo, You definitely right? need this, but <laughs> 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 too many conversations held between you and I, man. You you need this. Listen, cuz I love you. Talk. Yeah, Why? yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, man, I, I sit and talk to stretch, man. Me and him get deep. I'm talking real deep. Deep. We get deep. We get deep as the you ocean. Deep. No, I, bro, I, lo- I love it, though. Yeah, we, yeah. we get as deep as the ocean. Now, you know me. I keep it funky with him. Yeah. I keep it funky with him. Big cousin, little cousin. Yeah. I, I, I keep it as, uh, he, you know, as honest as possible. He tell me possible. straight up. He be like, yo, you wrong. You and wrong. I'm like, what? You wrong. <laughs> I look at him, bro, Rich. Yeah. I be like, what, what do you mean I'm wrong? <laughs> like... Like, let me break you, it down to you. Why you wrong? Cousin. You yeah, supposed to be on my, side. Be on my side. Yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna give you the. I'm gonna give you that clear vision, uh, that unbiased, un, yeah, I, unwarranted, <clears throat> unconditional. Respectfully, uh, I'm gonna give it to you raw. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to you real, and that's what I do with. That's what I try to do with everybody I come across. Yeah. real talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm talk talk about it, Razzle. I was I was just about to chime in and say that I think people value temporary happiness over overall happiness. Mm-hmm. So that, I think that plays a big part in it yeah. as well. Because you, you, you're in for those little little tiny moments, you know that's how you explain it. You, the, that extra thirty minutes with your friends mm-hmm. is not worth th- uh, three days of fighting with your girl. Fact. It's not worth it in the end. So that little temporary happiness, that's good. You had your little temporary fun, yeah. but now you're in the doghouse, and is that is it really worth it in the end? Is and at the end of the day, your friends ain't gonna be more. They they, they gonna understand really. Yeah. They gonna understand when you go home. Like I'm gonna holler at you tomorrow. At the end of the day. Your friends are temporary mad. Yes. If you don't understand that, that's crazy. Wait. Some people put they some people put their friends they 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 emotions too high. Yeah. Especially over their relationship. So now you about to you go home, you dip, your friends are gonna be like, dang, that's temporary. That it's over. I'll see you tomorrow. I, dang. You really about to leave, Rich? Yeah, I'm gone, bro. <laughs> dang. Bro, there's times where I don't even tell my friends I'm leaving. <laughs> Shit. I'm out. Bro. I'm out. I, listen here. Bro. I'm the same way though. I ain't gonna nah, lie. bro. I'm the same way. Expectation to be in yeah. the crib, bro. bro. I'm out the door and Talk it'd be his it. own house. <laughs> I'll go in the room and fall asleep on your ass. Love that. It'd be his whole. Be, it'd be his own. Ho- we in the backyard. Yeah. Barbecuing. Yeah. Food on the grill. He cooking. Yeah. Where Wes? Gone. Where Wes? His truck gone. <laughs> his truck gone. We we don't know where he went. Love that. This his house. <laughs> Love that. Sometimes you got to exclude yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I love so, that. So, sometimes you just got to remove yourself and just be at one, at peace. Yeah. I feel like this also brings in the conversation of priority. What's your, what's your priorities at? So, you know, first and foremost, my priority is being a father, mm. being the best father I could be. And that's to my beautiful children, yeah. Zoe and my son, Zane. Love that. So that's, that's my number one priority. Yeah. But my second priority is being a better man yeah. than I was yesterday. So... You know, I, I try to build on where I was at yesterday and try to make those steps to be better every Love day, that. you know, and with that, that better father, better fiance, better man, yeah. you know, and I try to carry that every day. So 
and then giving back to the community, uh, community that's a huge priority of mine. You yeah. feel me? Like I said, the boxing. Obviously, I coach high school basketball here. I coach for the last eight years. You know, um, I do so many different things that I try to leave my imprint on, yeah, and those yeah, are yeah. my priorities. Leave, leave, you know, crumbs everywhere. Yeah. So when everyone pick up those pieces, there's a big, there's a whole picture at the end of it. So I love that. I feel like. Uh once you can get your priorities in order, mm-hmm. you can figure out your life and your purpose. Yes. Because yes. then you figure out your purpose if you have your priorities in, in check, at least. I feel like Wes is a very purposeful type of individual. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that. You know? Um, from, you know, going on, t- what, like 15 plus years, I've been witnessing for myself, you know, in person. And, uh, bro, like I said in the beginning of this pod, bro, like maybe you don't see it or you'd maybe not even notice it, but this man motivates me in so many ways and inspires me in so many ways that I just try to, you know, take these mental notes down and try to, you know, make the necessary changes that I need to make. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so... You know, that stems a question, you know, how does it feel knowing that, you know, not only just myself, but maybe other, you know, uh, young black adults, me. males, me, look, look to you as, you know, a symbol. You know, I put, I put that, <clears throat> I'll say the people who paved the way for me, you know, it rubbed off on me. So why not give back to others? Yeah. So, you know, I, that's one thing I try to do. I'm I'm very grateful and appreciative that, you know, that y'all say those kind words to me. But I feel like if I didn't rub off on others, I, I failed. Respectfully. So, and like I said, I'm trying to pull as many people up as I can. And Harriet Tubman, you know, that was great inspiration. Yeah. Seeing her risk her life. Yeah. To, to save everyone and free everyone else, yeah. I just feel like that's the mindset I had to have. Yeah. You know, I had to I had to dig deep and, you know, hopefully influence others, you know, because I came from, like I said, I came from the trenches. It wasn't always sunshine and <laughs> pina coladas. <laughs> 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 no, I love that. I feel like you lead by example. And like I said before, some folks don't lead by example. They just yeah. try to lead. But where you leading me, Pop? <laughs> right. Where we going? <laughs> <laughs> to, Where a dark, is it? <laughs> to, to a dark path. <laughs> God damn! Okay. You say, this is not nice. Like, this where, is, where we at? <laughs> they, they gonna tell you what they gonna tell you. Sound like yeah. And, you know, and you you had to. Def- I had to, I had to, I felt there was people like that in my life prior yeah. who was always saying stuff to me. Yeah. You know, always like yo, and then I would see the hypocrisy in them, mm. and then you know instead of questioning it, because they gonna give you another story. Yeah. And then another one. Yeah. And then another one. Yeah. So if I if I if I keep believing your bullshit, I'm I'm gonna be like you. Yeah. So I had to all right. <laughs> you you learned me once. Respectfully. I learned. I'm good. You know what I heard? I heard from a wise man, my oldest brother said this. He said, There's great storytellers and then there's great leaders. And I believe that hundred percent. Listen, this is a this is a quote I live by. Yeah. Leadership shouldn't be questioned. It should be followed. Mm. And that's something that's something I truly believe. Mm. Leadership should not be questioned. It should be followed. I love so that. if I'm a leader, you ain't going to question me. You're just going to follow it. Yeah. And I'm going to do right. Yeah. I'm going to do right by you. I'm going to do right by me. I'm going to do right by us. So uh, love that. I love that. I really love this episode. I don't know. Yeah. Listen, I don't know. I, listen, this was a long time coming. This was man. a very long listen, time Listen, me and you have been texting back and forth. Yo. You good today? Yeah, I'm good today. Oh, man, I can't make it today. Hey, yo, you good today? No, nah, I can't do this today. Oh, hey, let's get the schedule right. So, yeah. listen, it, it, this was, this had to, Respectful. it had to happen. And I was just, when you text me today, like I said, when you text me, I swear on my soul, you can ask my daughter, I was texting you at I the same that. time. And I'm that. like, yo, he really, great minds thinking alike. Respectfully. So, I feel like I just, I do this because I love it. I do it because your voice needs to be heard and your journey needs to be told. I do it because... I want to do it on a, such a professional level that it's needed for the city. Yeah. I want to blow up. I want to be excited. But I also do it for build-me-ups. Yeah. Sometimes I need build-me-ups. And I only speak to people across from me 
that are doing great things. So what right. does that do for me? It builds me up. Facts. So Facts. one hand washes the other, regardless. Facts. Like I, I, I try to, I try to bring the best questions, the best conversations out because I'm not just throwing words. I think words have so much power that oh. I just want to just throw words in, into a mic and just people listen. I want to, I want to build. Yeah. I want to gain something from it. Right. And once I can gain knowledge, and motivation, inspiration, I'm good. I'm happy. Two views, one view, I'm good. Yes, sir. Whatever you get from it. Respect. Well, that, and listen, like I said, sit here from you. I, it's always been love every time always. I want to talk to you. Always. And I, I pick I pick your brain and y'all don't even know I'm right. I'm jotting notes too. Mm. I, every <laughs> person you come across should leave an imprint. Yes. You feel me? Every person you come across is gonna leave an imprint on you, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. So, you know, I've always I've always I, I take something to you, your charisma, your attitude, you. you know what I mean? Your love, your support for any and everybody you come across. It could be yes. it could be Joe Smo, you like, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 like yeah, you, yeah, all, yeah. you show love and that's yeah. authentic. Same with same with y'all, Razzle. Same with you. You know the same thing, cuz. Yeah. So it's always been it's always love. So I, I take that from y'all too. Maybe I could show more love. Maybe yeah. maybe I could do this. Maybe yeah. I maybe I could smile a little more. Maybe, you know, every time I see you, you smiling. Yeah. Got so Got I, I'm saying, and I, I literally take stuff like down, to yeah. take that shit down. Like, yeah. yo, maybe I could smile a little more today. You never know. Yeah. So, what do you think about that answer, Stretch? I love it. <laughs> Word. And we didn't even. I'm not. We didn't even touch <coughs> the surface, it. bro. Like the the man accolades. Oh, he got accolades on accolades. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it goes beyond the police work. Yes, sir. The man hustled on the court, football field. Mm. Man, talk about that's, it now. That's man. That's that's passe. No, no, I heard stories. <laughs> I heard stories, and you know, people only tell me stories when it's like meant to be told. Cause I'm not from out here, so they right. They, like, yo, Wes, he was a bad man. I don't know, man. <laughs> if they gonna say it, that's on them. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, like I said, that's cool. Yeah. I'll give you a little humble brag. Yeah, I was I was all right. I was all right. I was all right. I was all right. But nah, you know, I, I worked at my craft, real yeah. talk. Cause, you know, I had I had dudes like my cousin DeAndre Priester. Uh-huh. Animal. He, dude was God. Dude yeah. was he, he was on my same team. Yeah. I'm getting overshadowed by this cat. So I gotta work hard. Yeah. We going to family cookouts and they all they doing is looking at Dre. Yeah. But not knowing I'm averaging 15 and he averages 17 and I'm right behind him. But he, he, <laughs> yeah. he but you know, like stuff like that motivated me to wanna work on my craft. I looked up to Josh Wright. Josh Wright was a god. Yeah. That dude was a stud. Yeah. I've never seen something Jesus so smooth in my life. Josh yeah. was that dude. What? Josh Wright before him. You you know, I was looking up to all the older dudes and I I had to, I had a chance to sit back and observe. And then you know, growing up, I got to play it. my talent got me around the country. Yeah. To play it against different people. I played against dude in the NBA. Yeah. I played against some cats against uh, on some of these rosters. Yeah. You know, I I walked away with the MVP in some of these leagues, but you know, and <laughs> they got contracts. But hey, it, it, it's to be—it's about opportunity, it's about time, and, and yeah. stuff like that. You know, I had an opportunity to take my talents further mm-hmm. after college. After I left college, my sophomore year, <clears throat> I worked hard with my man Sean Burton. I give him big ups. Yeah. Sean Burton, one of the realest players I've ever seen. Five foot nine, white dude, wasn't super athletic. Know what yeah. I mean? But he he get to any shot he wanted. He could get to anywhere on the court. His handle was ridiculous. He got a pro contract overseas. Love that. So I was working out with him for two summers straight. Yeah. And his coach where he was playing was like, yo, we need a guard. Sean just came off of two MVP seasons. Rookie year and his sophomore year, basically MVPs over there. Yeah. He's like, yo, I got a dude I work with every day. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Everything is meant to happen for a reason. So the day Sean and I working out, we had New York Mills gym. Working out, getting right, getting get right. We in there, sun up, sun down. We didn't care. We was in there for hours. He asked me. He was like, "Yo, you, you thinking about, uh, you know, joining the team? You know, it ain't much money. It wasn't no hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. It wasn't yeah. nothing. It was like forty thousand dollars. Yeah. But it's something. You're hooping. You're hooping. Yeah. Untaxed dollars, <laughs> and yeah. getting paid for your craft. And like I said, this is everybody goes pro on something else. The day he talks to me about this, I'm like, yeah, sure. My phone rings. I remember the day like it was yesterday. My phone rang. I'm like, hold on, I'll take the, uh, let me take this call. I get a phone call. Yeah. I'm pregnant. Wow. <sighs> so do I chase my dream or step up and be a man? Yeah. So I had this conversation with my dad. I said, does it make me a bad person to go here? He said, 
nah, but what if you miss out on this? Yeah. I said, you know what, Dad? You just put it in perspective. I said, basketball is temporary. Heavy. Me being a father's forever. Forever. Fatherhood's forever. So I walked away. Yeah. I walked away from basketball. Walked away from my dream. Yeah. And if it wasn't for my daughter, I wouldn't be the man I am today. And I thank Zoe Soleil Jackson 100% for everything, yeah. you know, making me a father. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm blessed and fortunate. And that was the ultimatum I had with my career yeah. when it came to sports. So I walked away <clears> and I said, I can't. I'm not going to leave my child behind. You know, I'm going to be the best father I can be. I want to be there birth every step of the way of the pregnancy. Yeah. You know, I want to be there every day. Yeah. Who, helping her become a young lady that she is today. Yeah. And along the way, I could teach my craft to other people, leave that imprint, leave those crumbs on some of these players, and that's what I do with coaching. So I get my satisfaction from doing that. Yeah. I may not have the, you know, the notoriety and the fame, but I don't want that. I want to see you succeed. You feel me? Yeah. It's more, if you succeed, I'm happy for you. Love that. So. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I love bro. it. That's real. That's real life. I feel as if now let's go back to childhood now. <laughs> you talking to five year old West right now? <laughs> Probably got a ball in his hand, dribbling right now. Mm-hmm. Is he is he proud of you? I will hope so. I will hope so. No lie. I hope he don't has a, the cloudy judgment he had back then, because <laughs> he wasn't like I said at five. You know, I was a little tyrant. Yeah. You know. Uh, like I started playing, ho- I started hooping when I was two. Uh, I started playing in an actual league when I was four. Mm. My brother, three years older than me, I was on my brother's team. My wow. brother's seven. We was in a boys and girls club league. My brother's seven, yeah. and I was four years old, and I was all right. Yeah, I was all right. I was, I was holding my own with the seven year olds, respectfully. You were four, right, and, <laughs> and still hold them on. Respectfully. Same thing with football. I played football. Most people play five, six years old at flag. My dad was so adamant. Again, like with, with me playing a uh, flag, yeah. he said, No, I want my son to be challenged and push me. I played tackle yeah. at five years old. Wow. My brother's eight at the time. I was yeah. on my brother's team. Yeah. Five years old, scoring touchdowns, though. <laughs> so, like, and <laughs> yeah. my, my brother was, and his team was hella athletes. Yeah. But I was, that's, I think, me being exposed to the older dudes at such elevated a young age you. elevated me and yeah. made me want to, made me want to work hard and perfect that craft, you know? Mm-hmm. Love that. So, so I you think, feel like that was instilled in you? Yeah, that. Oh, listen, you know who my dad is. Come on, listen, my dad, no joke, man. He yeah. instilled, he instilled that not perfection, but he he demanded respect and he demanded uh, uh, you work. Yeah, you wasn't gonna, you wasn't gonna, nothing was gonna come easy to you, yeah. you know. So, and he demanded you work in the classroom, and that's one thing I, I exceeded in the classroom. Yeah. So I had to be a student before I was anything else. Same with my pops, yeah. And that, and and well, that's where we lack now. <laughs> that's where that's where we lack in our community now. Yeah. You know those type of fathers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, I was fortunate enough to have my dad, who you know, I, well, my dad took custody of me when I was yeah. three months old. Him and my mom. I would I would I call her my mom. I would never give her the title stepmom. That's my mom. Love that. So my mom and my dad. My my mom and my dad raised me. You know, my biological mom was a drug addict. So, you know, her choices and her her failures made her yeah. give us away. Yeah. So her, her, you know, no hard feelings. Yeah. You know, I gave her a nice eulogy send off when she passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, it wasn't. But I think if it wasn't for her shortcomings. Yeah. I wouldn't have had such a relationship with my pops. You yeah, feel yeah. me? I think it would have kind of. <coughs> I, I got to live with my pops full time and he. You know what I mean, he he rubbed off on me. So yeah, his strong will, his strong way. So I give him that credit. Wow. So you you, uh, you had a life, man. Oh, listen. <laughs> we ain't even, we ain't even get to the half of it. You had a life. I feel like you had, in a sense, a lifetime movie life. <laughs> 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 I ain't gonna lie, bro. You you've done it all. You've seen it all, done it all, and now you are in a profession that you see even more. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You seen things that you probably seen things you never even like, what this happened? Like, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those that's where that strong support system come into play. Yeah. Cause you know, when you when you're in this field, in this profession, you can see something so tragic yeah. and then go eat lunch. But after you eat lunch, you still got to go to work. Yeah. And then you see it again. 
and you see it again and yeah. again and again and again. Yeah. And you don't forget these things. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you know, uh, that's where that that therapist come into play. Exactly. That's where that's where the outlets come into play, like them hobbies. Oh, I fish my ass off. Yeah. When I'm stressed, oh, I'm hit. Tell him stretch. I go get on that water. I want to go fishing. Listen, I go Bro, get on that water. I just water. got done telling Raz of that. I was listen, so down. I go, listen, Raz, we might have to link up, boy. I'm with it. I'm with it. He ain't going to link you. Uh, Who? He ain't going to link that. This man, be fit. he go fishing like three in the morning. I'm, I'm fishing. Uh. <laughs> listen. Uh, if you want to go fishing, you, you want to go fishing. You lost me. That's yeah. like the best time, isn't that? Like yeah, the, super the, early. Yeah. Super early. The yeah. fish biting, boy. The yeah. water's still. So yeah. the time I would go is around like. And you ain't catching no fish. Okay. Look, <laughs> you ain't catching no fish. <laughs> like, Late in the afternoon, the water go, get hot. The surface start to get hot. They stay away from the surface. They drop lower. Uh, you know how it goes. So the time I go is like the hottest day, of the, the hottest time of the day. I go yeah. like. 3 p.m. And that's why you ain't never catch a fish. <laughs> I be waiting there, though. <laughs> you casting that reel. You just getting a shoulder workout. That's it. That's it. Straight get weeds, Chip. Weeds. I remember the first time my neighbor, back where, I, where, I, where I, my parents live, my neighbor uh, took a sh- fishing for the first time. And I'm like, this is about to be a blast. I do nothing. Do nothing. My brother went one time, got something big, and my, my, you know brothers is competitive. Yeah, I can't go home <laughs> without catching yeah. something, bro. Yeah. So I went. You. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm like, yo. And then my neighbor's son, Dylan and Tom, they they just. And I'm like, yo, what am I doing wrong? So I'm standing right next to these folks now. I'm like. Nothing. So then, it all comes with patience. That's it. It all. I literally. That's it. Hit, uh, Dwayne, that's his name. Was like, just calm down. It's gonna come. It's gonna come. You scaring them? Yeah. And I'm like, they feel right. that. They feel that every time you cast. Yeah. They so feel I'm that like, anger. All right. So I said, all right, boom. Deal. <laughs> Sitting. Not talking to nobody. Everybody caught one. I don't want to talk to nobody. You know, this is the time where phones weren't a thing, so I'm not really chilling on my phone. Yeah. I'm literally sitting there. <laughs> just just in your thoughts. Just chilling. There like, I better guess. I'm not leaving here. Until I think it, you, know, you know, when you were a kid, you think about everything crazy. Like, they yeah. can leave me. I'm staying at night. Like, <laughs> Rain, sleet, hell, snow. I'm care. not going nowhere. I'm not going home without a <laughs> catch. Then I finally, you talk yourself out like, it's not going to happen. Then you see that little, little tug. Yeah. I was like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring this in. Let me bring it in. And boy, that job was big. Not so. Wow. And Dwayne said, "You see, it's all yeah. about that patience." And listen, that that came. That that's why I started to fish. Patience, man. Patience, patience, and virtue, man. Something and you should definitely like clarity. Just, yeah, clarity. Something that can be worked on. It's not like you yeah. can't work on patience. Oh yeah. It's something you oh, can yeah. work on. Oh like, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he be catching some some good fish. Respect, <laughs> yeah. and never bring none of it back. I give it away to the yeah, people. Give it, right, give it right back. Yeah. I was gonna say, uh, fishing. Like I've always went fishing with my dad. Like my whole life. Because yeah. like, he's we've always had a boat, and uh, I feel like huh? money. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like with that, it it kind of brought. I don't know if my relationship would be as close with my dad. You know. As it is, because it's it's like a bonding point, you know what I mean? And it's like, I feel like no matter where, who I'm with, I feel like everything is just just calm yeah. and everything is just smooth, smooth. And I don't know. I just, I, I, I love, f- fishing brings out a very, very peaceful razzle. Oh, that, listen, respectfully, because I tell you the same thing. I got into fishing about three years ago. You know, I wasn't fortunate enough to go with my pops. My pops was afraid of deep water and all that. <laughs> he was afraid that. to get on the water. <laughs> So, you know, my uncle, my dad's brother, my uncle Bruce, I called him one day. He fishes all the time. He got a little boat. So I was having a hard time. I was stressing. This was around the time when I was stressing and trying to find, like, inner peace. So my uncle said, come with me. So I go with him. I go to Bass Pro. Load up. Swiping the card. (laughs) I need everything. I need to look. I need to How how do the fishermen look? (laughs) I need the Bass Pro hat. I need this. I need the shirt. I need the pants. I need everything. I got the boots, all that, right? So I get out there on the water. I'm the same way. Casting. Nothing. 
<laughs> Nothing. Straight, straight air. So my uncle's like, get off your phone. Turn your phone off. Yeah. Do this. Do that. Like, he's telling me how to become one, like, yeah. at peace. Yeah. Man, when I did that, man, I ain't going to lie. The first little fish I caught was about as big as my cell phone, boy. That thing was, like, this big. Yeah. I was I was happy as hell. I was happy. You had to see the smile on my face. I love that. But but it taught me patience. It taught me. It, it gave me clarity. It gave me, you know, I felt at ease. Yeah. I wasn't so tense. I wasn't so, you know, I wasn't so worked up. Yeah. I felt all the cares in the world was no longer a care. Yeah. So that's why that's why I'm saying that support system, that finding a hobby. Yeah. You know, in this field, is 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 strong, it's man. Important. It's strong. A general tip for a man today: What is something they should be working on currently? Working on yourself. Okay. Working on yourself. Real talk. Okay. Especially men of our community, man. Yeah. You know, like I said, you see a lot. You've been through a lot. Yeah. We we experience a lot. Yeah. So working on yourself, because we build shells. You know, we build those turtle shells yeah. over time, and that's where that pride and that ego come into play. After a while, you know, it becomes so hard, that shell, that you become so hard. Mm -hmm. You become heartless. Yeah. You know, I've been told I'm heartless. I'm told I'm cold. Yeah. And that's from the one I put a ring on. Yeah. So, you know, when you become like that, it's time to work on you. Yeah. So if you, you know, look yourself in the mirror, be comfortable with who you are, be comfortable with your blackness, be unapologetically black, um, be comfortable with everything about yourself. Yeah. So you give the full version, the best version of you to somebody else. Feel me? Love that. Love that. Yeah. That was beautiful. That, listen, that deep, man. I'm, I'm, I'm deep, man. I, you I'm, are. I'm deep, man. That's why I'm I, deep. That's why I, I jack you, bro. You're, you're a good guy. I'm deep, bro. You're a good dude. What do you think? Good guy. Good guy. <laughs> good, good guy. My boy good, Raz hey, over there. Great guy. Great, great guy. Great guy. Great guy. Great guy. Great guy. Great guy. Stretch, you got, you got anything you, you want to ask? Oh, dude, I could ask this man a hundred questions. Yeah? It's just, I pick his brain enough as it is, man. Yeah. So. Listen, we, we do a lot. We do a lot, man. Well, we're now at the point where I ask personality questions. What's up? And I, I, I didn't write anything down, so these are off the top of the head. Everything's well, off. The, this whole interview is exactly. off the top. Exactly. That's, why, that's, how, that's, that's how why it's crazy. been real. Rich, that's why I mean... Oh, you want to do it? No, no, no. Just let me ping pong off you. You go. Away. No, no, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> Question number one. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great one. This is a great one. Do you think happiness is obtainable at any second? No. Talk to me. I tell you it's not because everything you do in life isn't, you know, every second of the day isn't going to be happy. Okay. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to cry. Mm -hmm. It's okay to smile. It's okay to go through every stage of emotion. Okay. So that's why I say happiness isn't obtainable because you're going to have some tough times during the day, mm -hmm. you know, so it's okay to embrace those emotions. Yeah. So, you know, happiness isn't at the tip of your hand. Yeah. You feel me? So... You know, I I think it, it comes throughout the day. Yeah. But so does sadness. Yeah. So does fear. So does nervousness, anxiousness. So yeah. all those emotions you're gonna deal with. So no, it's not. Love that answer. Stretch. How would you describe mental strength or mental stability? Your your brain is definitely a muscle. Yeah. So. You you can work it as hard as you want to work it, and you, or you can make it as weak as you want to make it. You know, so I would say your your mental. If you're talking about mental health, you know, is that's a, that's a serious thing. You know, that is overlooked and undermined, yeah. especially in our community. So, yeah. you know, it's it's okay to read a book, take your time out, read a book, uh, self reflect. You know, journal if you need to journal. It none of this shit make you a punk, man. Yeah. I'm far from a punk. So none far of the, from. far from these are things I do to, like I said, to keep me as the best version I could be for yeah. my family and then for the people of the community. And then when I put that uniform on, that's I, that's what I'm representing as a community. Yeah. So mm. uh, my third one is <coughs> I love this question because everybody's answer is always so either it's never on the same 
Spectrum. Do you have an unanswered question in your life right now? <laughs> Oof. Yeah, man. Yeah, I do. That, you always got that what if. What if my mom wasn't a crackhead? Mm. Mm. How, how, how would... How would I have been as a man? You feel me? Yeah. So what if she didn't indulge in drugs and me and my brother didn't have to grow up with just my pops? Thank God I have, like I said, my mom, yeah. Diane, I love you to death. <laughs> yeah. Thank God, you know, I had her to show me motherhood. what uh, yeah. motherhood. You feel me? You know, she the dopest woman in the world, I tell you, because I got to give her her credit. So the whole time, my biological, biological mom was in prison and all that, right? Not to get off topic, but she was in prison. Mm-hmm. Throughout my entire sporting career, yeah. from when I was like twelve all the way up through high school and college, my biological mom, you know, she 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 incarcerated. Yeah, my mom, on the other hand, every clipping, every picture, yeah, every news article, Love that. any and everything got sent to that woman. Pictures, videos, everything got sent to her from my mom, without me knowing. She just wanted her to see how her son was being becoming a man that. so that's why i say she one of the dopest people because she didn't have to do that she didn't no. she owed nobody anything nobody she was taking on the burden of me and my brother and that was the do- one of the dopest things in the world you could do yeah. you know she's accepting my dad's children as her own yeah. and we become one you yeah. know we was, we was the poor man brady bunch <laughs> so you know but and she kept it she kept it so authentic and she wanted Tina to understand, like, hey, listen, these are your boys, but these are our boys now. Yeah. You feel me? And I want you to see this, how our boys are today. So, and I didn't realize that until she told me. She broke it down to me one day. She sat me down. She goes, yeah, I, I write her letters. I send her this and stuff like that. So, you know, that's a big what if to me. Like, yeah. what if she wasn't on drugs and what? I, how would my relationship be with her? Because that, I'll say, does that kind of make you look at women differently mm. the woman you love the woman who gave you birth abandoned you mm. so how do you view women mm. so you know that's and that's a a severe trauma that's a deeper topic yeah yeah that's a deeper topic that's we go we go deep, dive into that that's a deeper we go dive topic. into that another time <laughs> that's wow that, that's that what I'm saying so you gotta you gotta that's a big what if to me you know I think about it all the time yeah you know, I think about it. If she was, if she didn't pass away, what if she didn't get to meet my children? They passed. She passed away two years before my daughter was born, and obviously my son was just born in 2020. So, how would how would I have to explain that to them? Yeah, I don't talk to my daughter about that. Uh-huh. That's, th- those are you feel me? Uh-huh. Those those are things my daughter don't know about me about the dynamics of the family. Yeah, and that's a open quite. That's a unanswered question how would I explain that yeah mm. that's tough that that's was a good real. question I love that that was a great I, lo- I love it you see welcome welcome to the law uh, we shout out to the law <laughs> man. this is this is a great production great podcast thank great you. great everything man thank you, you y'all do a great great job here man yeah. I, I gotta give y'all y'all flowers man thank yeah yeah I've been I've been tuned in yeah you know thank I definitely you. gotta hit that subscribe button if hey. you haven't subscribe to subscribe the law right TV now. The Loft yeah, TV. Yeah. Subscribe right now. It's yeah. under there. Click that little red box to say subscribe. Yeah. You know, put a comment. Yeah. If you got any questions, yeah, like reach it. out, like it, whatever. <laughs> Thumbs Interact. up. Interact. Yeah. Thumbs up, right? Um, I always like to finish off the conversation like this. What are some wise words you want to leave the people with? Like I said, speak I, to I, Utica, man. I, speak I, to the I, city. I hit you with those lines before, man. Yeah. Leadership shouldn't be questioned, should be followed. Mm-hmm. You know, Oof. if you're going to lead, Make sure you're leading in a positive direction because someone's going to follow you. Yeah. And those people going to have people following them. Yeah. So you never know how much of an impact you're going to have on everyone that is following you. You never know who's following you. Yeah. So that's all I can say, man. If you're going to be positive, if you're going to lead, be positive. Make sure you leave that positive impact on everything you touch. Love you feel that. me? If it's a relationship, if it's, if it's a craft, yeah. friendship, yeah. you know, anything. You want to be the best painter, be the goddamn best painter. Go look up Picasso. Study. Yeah. You know, you want to be a cop? Go go study. But we do need more minority police officers. Yeah. So don't hesitate. Stretch, hurry up, get your ass on this side. <laughs> uh, 
You know, he he should already been here, man. That's a different topic to me. That's a yeah. different topic, man. Yeah, but gonna, yeah, yeah. When we can't talk about, we will. Elaborate. When we talk about that, yeah. we elaborate. But he should have been here already, yeah. man. He should be two years deep, two years on the force. So, but I'm saying we we need more <coughs> people of color in this field. Yeah, uh, more women. We have we have only one black female. That's crazy. Um, yeah, it's crazy. We have only one black fireman or female fireman, uh, which is my brother's sister in law, Tina Titus. We need more. We need more in these positions that are coveted positions. Yeah, you know, you don't need much. Yeah, a little, a little high school a, diploma. A reflection of your city. That's you. Your your departments should look like the community it serves. Yeah. So uh, we ain't no predominantly white community here in this city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stretch, wise words. Hey, Amen. You got me on this one, bro. I'm sorry. No, you're not allowed to do that on the law. You did this last time. You did this last time. You're not. You're not allowed. Well, but this is two good episodes back to back. Like, hey, that I've been a part wise of. Wise words. Wise words. Just, I say. All right, I'll say this. I'll say, um, you know, personal time, quality time is very important. Make mm. sure that you're 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 taking care of yourself, taking care of your health, your mental. Your emotions, mm. um, you know, just just if you if you overworking, you know, take that time. This is the, this is a, uh, a sign to you right now to to stop. Take that you know ten fifteen minute break, mm-hmm. relax. You know, recenter yourself, reevaluate your goals, and if you if you if you still on that right path, you still on that right road, you know, then get back after it. But if you gotta take that little change of direction, it's okay. Don't be discouraged. Exactly. Don't be discouraged. Love that. Razzle, wise words. I would say <clears throat> take time to value your surroundings because mm-hmm. you are a reflection of who's around you and what's around you, mm-hmm. no matter what situation you're in. Um, I mean, if you're around people that are successful, you're going to be su- successful because they want to see you be successful. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll just say value your surroundings. Love that. Your friends are like elevators. They could take you up or bring you down. Remember that. Yes, sir. Remember that. Well, I, I guess just want... it's on me. Um, my wise words of today, um, I think it's going to be very simple. Um, say a prayer. That's it. Deep. Deep. Say a prayer. And if, hey, if you don't believe in God, meditate. I'm, I'm deep into meditation, man. I sit down and, oh, man. Yeah. I, I get into it, man. Yeah. I get into it. I, I become one with my feelings. I ain't gonna lie. Love that. Need to. Love that. Need to. But I, I'm heavy on. Say a prayer. It, 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 sing a song. Sing a gospel song. That's like praying twice. That's fact. But uh, yeah, I, I'm so thankful for you coming on this show, my brother. Listen. So thankful. I'm glad we got this done, man. Yes. Rich. I'm 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 <laughs> truly glad. Zoe. Yes. Come here, Zo. Come here, honey. You know, I give you a lot of credit in this. This, now, I mean, this is my beautiful daughter. Look yes, at yes. It's my, it's my, it's my beautiful daughter. Yeah. What do you guys say? I don't know. It's, you your time to shine. it's your time to shine. You say you gonna have a show one day. Come on. Um, I'm trying to think what to say. Whatever you want to say. Mm, yeah, great man. I, Ooh, I love that. Love Clap it up for the room. Mm. Clap it up for the room. Mm. Thank now, you, honey. I just want to ask you, welcome to the loft. I have one question for you. Yep. What is your number one goal right now? Uh, to be the greatest soccer player of all time. Uh, I love that. Say it again with some confidence. To be the greatest soccer player of all time. And that's it. That's the only way we're going to achieve that is through hard work, though. You know that. Yes. Welcome to the love. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Come on now. Come on now. How could you not like <laughs> I, this? How are you not subscribed yet? <laughs> like what? They slacking. Tell, tell them to subscribe. Tell the microphone. They, tell them they should subscribe. Subscribe. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. The love season four. We're out.